2 p.m. It's Bible study time. Thank you for joining us. We'll wait for some folks to catch up on Facebook. Those um, those always run a little slow. Catching up, always a little slow. So we'll be waiting for those folks to catch up. I just got the notification myself. Hope you're having a great day. Hi, Terry Lynn. Hi, Cindy. Cheryl, good to see you. Eric, the Lord be with you. <laughs> Hello, Will. Good to see you, my friend. I got a sticky note on my computer not to do the Will Robinson joke. One, two. Not going to do it. Hello, Aaron Finker. Um, make sure you catch a, a Pastor Finker's talk for today. Um, video short today on uh, the Nicene Creed, which is just a great, great one. And he'll be doing, um, we have to record that, but he'll be doing a Bible 10-minute um, video short next week on uh, the Augsburg Confession. Augustana. Ooh, how exciting is that? Oh, good stuff, good stuff. All right, so um, we are in the midst of Hi, Beth. Hi, Priscilla. All right. And Betty. All right. So um, we are in, um, I've got to wait for the Bible software to open up. We are in chapter three of Colossians. We were just getting to that section where. Um, where, where they were in a, where the apostle was going to be talking about, um, hi Pat, he was going to be talking about wives and husbands, uh, children and parents, um, and the like. And so, uh, very, 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 very cool section. And remember, all of this is built on this bringing together of the church. Um, uh, Jews and Greeks. And so he proclaims them to be something more. In Christ, they're different. They're not the way they were before. Um, not because of a change in them, but because, hi Kathy, because God in Christ sent his son to die for them. So peace has been made by the blood of his cross. And so now he proclaims them to be um, a different reality. He speaks that reality into, um, into existence. Hello, Newman. Lestico celebrated 19 years in the Holy Ministry yesterday. What a young pup. You know what I mean? When you've been a pastor, as long as I've been a pastor, you learn a lot about being a pastor. In 19 years, he's still a young pup. This year, in July, I celebrate my 20th year in the ministry. If you're asking me the difference between Lestico and me, it's a long year. Anyway, so let's get to it. Colossians 3, we want to go to, oh, 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 oh. Oh, no wonder. I was like, man, that doesn't look right. That's because it wasn't right. 
and Colossians 3, beginning with the 18th verse. And so, boom, there you go. There we are. Hi, Suzanne. Hi, Roman. Pietro was 20. Yeah, yeah he was, yeah. Hi, Maggie. Hope you watch later. All right, so, wives, hupotasis that. Husbands, as is fitting in the Lord. So, uh, hupotasso means to submit. Wives, line up behind your own husbands as to the Lord. Um, this is better explained, well, more thoroughly explained in Ephesians, which um, I imagine we will get. Um, I was going to do Ephesians, but somebody else I want to do a Bible study for you said, you know, I, I could do Ephesians. So I pivoted so that that person could do Ephesians. But um, we want to, uh, wives, submit to your own husbands. So line up behind. And, and well, what does this mean, to line up behind? It means to trust that he's going to be Christ for you. So be ready to, to, to let him give up his life for you. Let him be the head and you be the body. Um, Christ gives his life for his bride, the church. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Here, husbands, love your wives and do not be bitter or harsh with them. So abuse is antithetical to the Christian faith. And anyone who wants to import Christian scriptures in order to um, be abusive toward their spouses is not reading the scriptures. Very clearly, don't be bitter toward your spouse. Don't. So wives, line up behind your husbands. Husbands, die for your wives. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. That's Ephesians 5. Here, wives, and there it's also uh, wives submit to your husbands and everything. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body, which is himself her savior. In the same way, a husband should love his wife as himself. He who loves his wife loves himself. So, This does not mean get me my beer when I want my beer. This means die for his die for your bride. Be Christ for your bride. That's the context in Ephesians. And that's the way you should read this section. Wives, submit to your husbands, which is fitting in the Lord. And husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, listen from above. That's obey. Um, that's why I, I think that that hupotasis that the vows should not be um, obey. It should be submit. And they did change in ESV. I'm sorry, in um, LSB. So what I what 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 I would say is is lining up behind somebody isn't bad. If you know that that person is going to take a bullet for you. Look, in the, um, if you look at any of the old, not just watch any of the old movies which, uh, which sort of project fighting in the Renaissance period, people would line up in straight lines, one person in front of the other person in front of the other person in front of the other person. And that line would shoot at another line of people. Well, look, if you were the last guy in line, it wasn't necessarily bad. Okay, if you were the first person in line, it could be very bad. First person through the door into a dangerous situation. So um, you line up behind somebody that you believe they're going to you're going to they're going to take the bullet for you, that they're going to give up their life for you. Um, that you that they're going to. Um, they're going to. Uh, hi, Jennifer. They're going to give their life for you. That's what Christ does for the church. 
Christ isn't harsh with the church. He dies for her. So as Finker says, bride is more important than husband. Um, so she lines up behind him, trusting that he's going to give his life for her. And the children line up behind both of them. But the translation... Um, the translation obey isn't, I, I, I don't think captures it because, because what's going on is um, as Christ takes the bullet for his church, so Aaron takes the bullet for Sarah, Pastor Finker. Sarah, I, I, I preached at their wedding. But, um, I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what goes on. Submission is about service and sacrifice, not a power play. That's Aaron Finker. God doesn't do power plays. He does death on the cross. So you need to read this in the same regard as the stuff that comes before, which is all about Christ giving up his life for her, for you, the church, his body. Same stuff. Fathers, do not provoke your children so they get discouraged. Interesting. This is not moms. This is fathers. Um, I've always found this to be interesting. Fathers have to be told not to, um, uh, not to enrage their children. Moms do not have to be told that. That doesn't mean that moms don't occasionally get a little scrappy with the teenage boys um, or girls. It just means that that when he's given it, when the apostles given out to the Gentiles how to live, it's wives trust your husband, trust that he's going to give his life for you. Husband, love your wife and give up your life for her. Children, obey your parents and everything that pleases the Lord. Fathers, don't enrage your children. And cause them to get discouraged. These next things, 22, douloi, servants, obey in all things of the flesh your lords. Not by way of, oh, this is a great word, aphthalmodulia, that is, I slavery. So not by I service. Not just not just by I service or as people pleasers. What a great word. Apoparaskoi. What a great word. Wow. So not not just with I service or um um yeah, that, that too, Pastor Lestico. Um, not just in eye service or in as a people person, a people pleaser, but in with a sincere heart, fearing your Lord. Um, fearing the Lord. So, so like the same way that you fear God, you should fear your boss, um, or you should fear. And, and, and this is important to understand, especially nowadays. Because so, now, so people read those verses and they're like, well, okay, so Christianity is okay with slavery, which is not true. Um, Christianity isn't about changing governments. It's not, by, it's not about remaking um, the Roman Empire into, um, into a Christian government. You want, you want to uh, remake the government, you go to... Um, um, You go to um, go to go to go to go to Islam. Um, what Christianity is about is everything remaining in its proper place. Okay, and by that I mean not that they're pro the place; they're pro best conduct in said vocation or place. And so he goes right down the line: husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church; wives love your husband; uh, wives. Submit to your husbands. Um, uh, 
Yeah, exasperate's a great word. Um, it's just like, Mike, well, let me get there. Um, children, obey your parents. Fathers, don't exasperate your children, which would, as Lestica points out, include mothers insofar as the Roman household was headed um, by the man. And you could do the same in Christianity, but I just don't think normally women have to be told that. But down the line, sometimes they do, um, down the line to slaves and masters. So it's not that they're pro-slavery, they're pro-vocation. So, like, don't just be a yes guy or a um, or out of eye service, like good while he's around, but but actually be a good be, be a good servant as Christ as you serve Christ. And, 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 and on the same vein in this is I would treat this like you would treat your, your work now. But if you want to like understand what Christianity thinks about slavery, we did a video short on that yesterday and I will find it for you since, um, I think everybody is, is, um, working today in higher things. Um, but, uh, uh. which was Philemon. Philemon is an escaped slave. So um, Philemon is this escaped slave. And so he, uh, he, I'm sorry, Onesimus is an escaped slave in Philemon. Philemon is the slave owner. F thank you. Philemon, my brain does that all the time. Philemon, the letter to, from Paul to Philemon is concerning Onesimus. Onesimus, whose name means useful, okay? And, um, that's what his name means, useful. Um, he was useless to you so that he could be both useful to both you and me. Thank you, Cheryl. Um, and and so, like, the answer that Paul gives him is for him to receive Philemon. I'm sorry, for Philemon to receive Onesimus. For Philemon to receive the slave back as he would receive Paul. And he doesn't force him to do it. He, he just says, the, because of the love that you have for me, because of the love that you have for God, you're going to free, uh, free Onesimus. And he does free Onesimus. So if you want to know what Christianity is about, it, it's, it, its message ends slavery. Not by means of law. This is what you have to do. But because the... Um, the gospel and love and freedom change the way we see others. And so when you read this section, I would read it today as this is how I work. Okay. I work not, I, I'm not to my boss, only give eye service and I don't just give, oh yes, yes, yes in everything. Um, no, i Fear my boss like I fear God. Um, I was uh, an RA. It was my last real job. I was an RA for two years, uh, three years. And I was RA of the year twice um, over uh, my dorm. And that, and, I, and I, it sort of, a, I went home and I was like, Dad, I got this honor again. And he's like, well, what did you do? And I said, well, um, I did my job and my dad goes, um, <clears throat> well, you learned son that, um, if you do your job and you do it well, um, usually you'll advance in life. You'll, you'll, you'll move forward in life. And, um, because other people don't do their job or do it well, um, which I thought was a, a very good lesson that he taught me there. So here, you want to take this section on slaves as how you serve others and how you serve at work. Not just with lip service or eye service or with being a yes person, but with a good heart. You know, be the best cobbler you can be. Be the best programmer you can be. Be the best pastor that you can be. Be the best deaconess that you can be. Be the best registrar that you can be, Cindy. And um, teacher you can be. Be the best executive director, be the best, um, 
uh, pampered chef person. Be the best. Um, be the best that you can be in the job that the Lord gives you. And that's what this is all about. Staying within your vocation. Which is the next verse. Whatever you do. Work. Um, out of your life. To the Lord and not to men. Work as if you're working. Um, um, working heartily or working with working to save your um working to um save your working working as if your life depended upon it i think that's the um to god not to men which is which is just isn't that what you want you want your kids to clean your their room because they're going to be good kids you want you want your um you want your workers to go above and beyond, not for reward, but because um, they love the organization. You want um, uh, company uh, workers to work um, because they love the company. Work as if you're, and, and, and Christians are to work as they're working for God, as if, as if they're doing the, what they do for God and not for men. So they're not doing it for advancement. They're doing it, which, by the way, makes their job the same as this job. Wherever you're working, whatever job you're doing, wherever God has placed you, you're working for him in that particular field. Not everybody needs to be one of these. God needs um, these other vocations, too. Which, which may not have all the glitz. And each person doing their particular job in their particular place is serving him in those places. This is vocation 101. I remember when learning about vocation for the first time as a young Lutheran, I did a double take because I was like, is that vacation? Because I would love to learn about vacation. Vocation. V-O instead of V-A. I gotta have a V eight. That that's a V and an eight. Just no. <clears throat> um, hi Brian. You didn't miss anything. We're just talking about vocation, and so this is the doctrine of vocation, which is a really strong um, tenant of Lutheranism, because it's a really strong Christian thing. And when someone says, "Well, Lutherans are weak on vac on sanctification," I'm like, uh. Well, you know what? I'd, I'd rather be weak on sanctification than weak on vocation. Um, they're the same thing. How you work out your salvation in this life, you do it in your various vocations. And Paul has rattled them off for us. Husband, wife, children. Uh, parents. Parents. Um, work wherever God puts us that's where we're working and we're not we're working for him and not for men and so um, you don't have to be one of these to be working for God Whatever you do, however you do it, you're working for him. Being the best student you can be, being the best teacher that you can be, being the best um, worker that you can be, that's your... So everything... And think about how wonderful this is because everything finds its meaning. In Christ. Husbands and wives, their relationship doesn't have meaning all by itself. It might have meaning for a time, but if it runs out of gas, then what? No, they, it finds its meaning in Christ. Parents and children. How does it find that? How does parenting find their meaning? Because, because your kids love you? Sometimes they don't. Sometimes they look at you and go, I wish you were dead. Well, how does that relationship find meaning? 
It finds meaning in Christ. And work. How does work find meaning? Work finds its meaning not because I'm Inspector 13 on the on the Fruit of the Loom rack and and um, it, it finds its meaning in in Christ. Without me, I'm doing a good work that God's gonna gonna going to 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 use to bless someone else. So that when somebody opens a bag of of of, of underwear for their kids, like I don't have to worry about this. It's been expected by Inspector 13. Good to see you, Sandra. All of this is right here in Colossians, tucked away in a chapter that nobody would expect it to be in, chapter 3. So why are you the best IRS agent you, you can be? Why are you the best... Um, teacher you can be. Why are you the best legal secretary you can be? Why are you the best um, hairdresser that you can be? Why are you the best trainer that you can be? Because God has given you this vocation to do. And you live out your faith by working in the place where he's put you. Not everybody has to um, be, a, be a starship captain. Not everybody has to be, um, you know, after all, I mean, gallivanting around the cosmos is a, is, a, is, a, is a game for the young. Wrath of Khan. Um, but not everybody has to be a pastor. Not everybody has to be a teacher. Not everybody has to be, you could be an electrician and God love you. You can be a musician and God will love you. Sometimes he gives multiple vocations. Where he's placed you, that's where he would have you be. All you got to do is look around. How will I know? How will I know what you're thinking? Um, well, God, uh, I just have to look around and see the things that you have done. Or breakfast attendant, you got it, Pat. All you got to do is look around. And when you're trying to figure out what to, what to do with the rest of your life, how free is, is your life? is are you now to not have to worry about doing a vocation that involves religion? You don't have to do that for God to love you. He loves you in Christ, which frees you to do all sorts of things. National champions, babies. Um, all right, so that's the doctrine of vocation. And when somebody says Lutherans are weak on, on sanctification, I'm like, no, you just don't get it. Because you think sanctification is all about just about you being a better person and you making it, you making yourself a better person. Um, when that thing is Christ in you, um, yes, I know we don't sell those. I don't have anything that we sell here. Um, but um, what sanctification also is, is, hi, Earl, good to see you. Um, what sanctification also is, is living out Earl being the best programmer he can be. Cindy being the best teacher she can be. Um, Lestico being the best pastor he can be. Um, bar slow on that. Mike being the best, uh, school director he can be. Um, and, and so forth. As we work out our salvation when fear and trembling, as we're working for God, not men. And it's God at work through us to do what he wills for the sake of others. This is freedom, freedom to do anything. Well, how will I know if I'm on the right track? Well, right track implies a law that you're that God needs you at a certain place at a certain time. 
if he needs you to be at a certain place at a certain time, he's going to jolly well bring you to that place and at that time. But it's going to be in freedom, not in law. So you simply can do anything. Look at the Ten Commandments. Things that violate the Ten Commandments, those are not vocations that are for you. So one of my um, former uh, catechumens looked up and said, so I can't be a hitman. Exactly. You can't be a hitman. Because murder is contrary to the way God has made you in Christ. An icon of the image, of the, of the knowledge, the, possessing the knowledge of the image of the invisible God, Jesus. So give up your stripper pole because that's not what he asked for you. But short of that, you have a crazy amount of freedom, which causes the question usually from somebody who hears this, who wants law and wants to tell people that there's an exit that you have to get for God to love you or else those people usually go, warm up my vocal cords for it. Well, if you tell people that they can do anything, then they're going to commit adultery. I want you to just sort of think about that. The doctrine of vocation, God living out your faith in love for your neighbor is not the cause of fornication, adultery, and other great shame and vice. If while we seek to be in Christ, we are shown to be sinners, does that make Christ a minister of sin? And the answer is Megeneto, heck no. So we would like to import the law into this in order to control and force and clean up what is a mess of freedom. But God would have it no other way other than to be such a God as to allow Will to be a pianist. And to play to the glory and majesty of Almighty God. Or Cheryl to do that. Or Maggie to be an insurance agent. Or Earl to be a computer programmer. Or my brother to be law my brothers to be lawyers. Or uh Colonel Davis to be a colonel. Retired. That his his doing good for others through you is not the cause of sin. But we would like to get control of that and force it and turn it into if if Will doesn't find the right thing to do from God, then or else. And that is all law. And how many Christian churches are run with, you got to figure out the will of God. And then once you figure out the will of God, you got to get on that highway. Well, you know what? Life is a highway. And I want to ride it all night long. Life is a highway. I'm going to ride it all night long. Get it? It's a song. If you're going my way. But the point here is, is, is all of religion is turned into figuring out what God wants you to do and then doing it. And that is to bring you back under the control of the law. As if having begun by the spirit, you are now perfected by getting off the right exit at the right place at the right time. Or else. And the thing to think about in all of this is the disposability of the Christian. He has a vocation for a while. And then if he's done with us, well, then we'll, he'll give us something else to do. Look, I may not always. I may not always do the pastor thing. Okay? He may have something else for me. And when he, when he has something else for me, he will bring me to the something else. Whatever that something else may be. Earl may not always be a programmer. 
he may bring him to something else or a, a tech person. Um, uh, uh, Cheryl, I think, was the insurance agent. Uh, yeah, there she is. Um, no, no, no. Cheryl was the pianist. Maggie was the insurance agent. He could have something new. Well, how will I know? Well, I, I'll, I'll know this when he brings me into the something new. But the idea that I'm going to move up this chain to the perfect thing for me is just utter law, run religion. Again, do you see it now? So don't try to figure out what God's right exit is or else. Because that's not going to save you. The one that saves is Jesus. Who died for you, rose for you, lives for you. He's the God who saves. That's sanctification. Run in the way of the gospel, not in the way of the law. Freedom. Don't run sanctification by the law. You will end in despair. Let the Lord run it. All right? Well, aren't we involved in it? Well, yes, you are. Like a tool in the hand of the master. Like a horse, um, he's riding you. And he's going to get you where he needs to get you. For the good of others. Trust him. And by trust him, that is not to put you underneath another law. Receive from him good. Believe that he's a good God. He's going to carry you into where he needs you to be. If he needs you to be anywhere. And then when you get to where you need to be or where he needs you to be and the good works flow, you look up at him and be like, well, I'm glad I got here. I chose wisely. No, you brought me here for maximum good to brighten Lestico's day with a little bit of Jerry Seinfeld humor. Receiving from him, that's faith. Finker beating me to the punch. It's for freedom that you've been set free, not to be dragged back under the law. Which, secretly, is what those who would enslave you to the law and its demands would like you to, to think. So that you would live your life, and I'm going to pick on Terry Lynn here, that, that, we, that Terry Lynn would think to herself, okay, so I was under law, and, he, he, and I was a stranger to God, and then he saved me by grace alone, through faith, washed that on me in baptism, made me alive with Christ when I was dead in my trespasses and sins. And everything about that is right until we make the next step so that I could be back under the law again. Because that's what God really wanted. Wrong answer. So that I could be free, finally, to love and serve my neighbor. Is there law there? Well, yes, there is. Because Terry Lynn now opens the law and says, well, how can I love and serve my neighbor? I'm going to learn from the law how to do that. But she does that not to try to save herself anymore because she doesn't have to save herself because she's already saved. She doesn't wrestle salvation away from Jesus. Now that you've gotten me here, it's my job to finish the job. That's not the way Jesus works. This ain't the Apollo mission. Jesus doesn't get you in space and give up the seat so you can dock the ship. That's This is not what's going on. All right? He takes you up. You live your life in him. He brings you to all the places that you need to be. He enlivens you to do good works for those around you. And then when you land, he's like, look at all the stuff that Terry Lynn did. When I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was in prison, you visited me. You needed clothes, you clothed me. What did I do that? Well, when you did it for the least of them, you did it for me. Wasn't that you doing it? <laughs> You're such a funny Jesus. Why are you doing that to me, Will? That's not that's not happening, man. We're not we're not going there.
that. Go in there. Oh, he's not done yet. So, you're not working for God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, you're not working for men. You're working for God in 23. 24, knowing that um, from the Lord, you will receive apolampsestha, um, a reward, a, uh, a, 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 a reward of inheritance. You are serving Christ the Lord. Uh, it's like uh, Jafar from um, from uh, Aladdin. Your eternal reward. Except that just doesn't sound right, you know. When it's in, when it's um, you can't earn an inheritance. You get the inheritance despite you. Sometimes. When we adopted Patrick, kid's main concern is, does this mean that the inheritance is split three ways instead of two? Yes. Yes. Yes, G4. And then I was so proud of him because he sat back and he was like, so instead of getting a, a half, I get a third, Dad? I'm like, yep. And he goes, I think that's worth it. I like Patrick. You're not earning. You're not working to earn favor with God. You are working because you already have the favor of God. Your inheritance, your uh, 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 the reward that you receive from God is not why you're working either. But he just tells you, this is going to be blessed. Because sometimes when your head's down in the mud and you're the only thing keeping you going is singing stuff like, ain't nothing going to break in my stride. Ain't nothing going to slow me down. When, or, and that's what's going on in you. And you don't have a lot of wind in your sails and breath in your, um, or gas in your tank. It's good to hear God pat you on the bottom and say, I'm going to reward you after all this is over with. That's the loving of God. But you look back at him, you're like, no, I'm not doing this for a reward, though. He's like, I know, and thus I'm going to reward you. <laughs> I love bro. You can see it when the song hits broils. Oh, no. Whatever you do, work heartily as you work for the Lord, not men, knowing that in the from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance um, uh, reward of inheritance. That's the way the Greek is. You are serving the Lord Christ. OK. Twenty five for the guy, the unrighteous um, receives back uh, for what is done wrong. And uh, not with with uh, there is no partiality. So so you're serving the Lord Christ. Um, and I really think that four goes with the previous chapter. It's misnumbered. Um. I find that to be odd. I think four in four one actually should go better in the other section. So we're going to do it here just to end the other section, which is um, uh, uh, masters. Um, uh, grant your servants um, just and f justness and fairness. Okay, so so treat your servants with 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 justice and uh, treat them fairly. 
knowing that you have a Lord in heaven. And this, again, is one of those moments in which we should sort of pause and think to ourselves how what this says about slavery. So if the master is to look at the servant and, and treat him as the Lord treats us, how's this, what's going to end up with the servant? Bring it to completion in your coconut. Think it through. Let it ruminate a little bit. God has set us free in his son. He has adopted us and made us children of God. That's what he did. He served us. And so masters should serve their, their servants. Notice it's turned upside down. The Son of God becomes servant of all to save all. Masters, serve your slaves. And that means free them. The longer that this message of the gospel of love and freedom in Christ is preached, the more slaves will be free. Same with, um, and now let's change this to workers. Managers, supervisors, deal with the people under you justly and fairly, knowing, knowing that you have a master in heaven. You have a, you have a manager in heaven. And, and, and Finker's right. Slavery um, was an economic reality in the ancient world. But it wasn't a permanent thing. Your debts were all paid every seven years. Should have been. Which granted a picture of God's relationship with us. That he forgives us of our sins. But I would loop four with the previous section. Right down the line in vocation. There's a song. Right down the line, it's just you and me, I think. I have to think about it. I think I just butchered some lyrics, but um, so wives and husbands, children and parents, workers and bosses or slaves and servants, ser slaves and masters. And, 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 and that last bit, how much does it scream? You're gonna <coughs> excuse me, I don't have I don't have the COVID. I just getting a little dry. That last bit though, if if we treat others like he treats us, no one will ever be in debt. You want my tunic? Take my cloak as well. You want me to walk one mile with you? I'll walk two. You 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 owe me that? Don't worry about it. Because that's what God in Christ has done to us. He has freed us to free others. Don't be like this culture which is holding people's sins back and holding them ransom and making them pay their way out of social purgatory. Don't do that. That's not, that's not you. That's the world. You, you've been forgiven so that you can love and forgive others. Which is different than I've been forgiven so that God might save me. You can contemplate that for a few days. Well, you will only have to contemplate it once. Um, one day, because tomorrow, same bat time, same bat channel, we will gather together again for Bible study, Saturday Bible study. Um, and, and, and what I would ask also is that um, you go to merchandise store and hire things, store.hirethings.org. Use the, the code live Bible study, all caps, all one word, live Bible study for bargain deals on our old merchandise. Remember, we changed our, our, um, we changed our logo, and since we changed our logo, um, 
Old logo. See it in the corner? Oh, that's awful. New logo. See it in the corner? And since we changed our logo, all that other stuff has to go. So store.hirethings.org. Go and buy some stuff today. Have a great day. Have a blessed day. And I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow. There's always tomorrow. It's only a day away. Bye.